we are going to solve decode ways so we are given a mapping dictionary where each alphabet is mapped to a number and we need to find the decoded message from the encoded message so basically all the characters of the alphabets are mapped to 1 to 26 and now we are provided with a string of numbers okay and we need to tell from this string of numbers how many decoded messages we can generate so let's see the first example this one so we have triple one zero six okay so we can decode this encoded message in two ways first thing is we will read this 11 together this 10 together and this 6 so the total is 1 here 1 this is one way of reading so what will be the characters 11 will be k then 10 will be j and 6 f so this is our one decoded message the other will be we will read this one alone again this one alone this 10 together and this 6 alone so a a j f so this is the other decoded message so there are two possible way of decoding this message okay now let's see the second example so second example we have 12 as our encoded message so one way of decoding is like read one separately and read two separately so this is our one way so this is a b okay now the second way of decoding is read this as a whole 12 so 12 will be decoded as l so this is our second way so there is two ways for this 12 so we are going to output 2 here also we are going to output 2 so the problem statement is clear to us so let's clear this thing so our decoded letters could only lie from 1 to 26 okay so it could be either one care long or two care long it's not going to be more than that if i means i want to say if i want to generate a letter for the encoded message so this letter could be generated by either single care of the encoded message or two care of the encoded message okay so let me write one letter of decoded message decoded message can be generated okay can be generated by single care of encoded message single care of encoded message or two care of encoded message okay two care of encoded message i am explaining this point because our algorithm will going to depend on this factor because this point is telling us that if i want to decode a message then either i can read one letter at a time or i can read two letters at a time i can't read more than that because there is possibility of these characters to be converted in the alphabet is there if i take a three length characters of encoded message there is no possibility that i can i can decode it in a single letter because we are going to decode character by character so firstly i need to decode for the first character then i will go for the second character so there is like two possibility for the first character what either it can be generated by the single letter of the encoded message or it can be generated by the two letters of the encoded message so we have two choices here okay either i can choose one letter or two letter of the encoded message to convert into a single letter of decoded message okay so let's let me clear this screen so that we can start our algorithm so we will start with 
zero zero. So this is our starting index of the encoded message. So we have two choices. Either I can read one character and decode to a single character. or either i can read two character at a time and decode to a single character okay either we can read one char or two char so if i read one char this index will be shifted to 1 and this this is from 0 and this will become 2 to 0 okay now again here we have two choices so we need to check also while we are reading this one character this single Encoded characters should lie in this range, one to nine. If it's not in this range, if it's zero, so we can't decode it because there is no mapping defined for zero thing. So we need to return from here and tell that there is no possible way to decode this message by reading a single character. So we are going to return zero from this path to our parent function. Okay, or in if we are reading two character and if we are getting a number that is greater than 26 then also there is no mapping defined for number greater than 26 so we need to need to tell our calling function that there is no way that we can decode this message so i need to return zero here also okay so when while we are doing the decoding thing we need to put this if condition that if this single char which we just chopped from our original string is in the range of 1 to 9 then we are going to continue this path if it's not in this range we are just going to return 0 and when we are reading this two character thing if this character if this two character integer value is not in the range of 10 to 26 we are going to return zero because this path is not going to give us the decoded uh, message so this if condition we need to put in our recursive function now we read one char two char here again we are going to read one char so here one here two char so it will become two till here it will become three again for this one also if we read so this one become three and this will go four similarly we will continue till what point we will continue until our this encoded string becomes empty so it will go till n if n is the length of our encoded message okay length of encoded encoded message okay so it will be equal to the n this part because we are chopping one one character so it will go till the length of the encoded message okay and we have two choices at each point so what will be the time complexity so it will be 2 raised to the power n okay so this is our time complexity and what about the space complexity so this recursive function is going to take o in space because at most this will go till this depth so this is the height of the tree so space complexity is o n now if we see in this tree there are sub problems which are computed again and again see this uh, let me take another this sub problem is computed already here so no need to compute it again we are going to hold this value when computed first time we are going to store it in some intermediate memory or dictionary or list whatever which memoization technique or a space we want to use we will use that space and store this in a intermediate thing and when we are going to hit the same sub problem we are going to use the value from here directly so this sub tree will vanish we don't need to do this calculation again okay so now using dp thing what will be our time complexity so at most it will go till on so now our time complexity reduced to on and what about the space complexity A space complexity will be still on okay so the first thing that we are going to do is going to extract our length of a string encode this string so n is equal to len s 
now we are going to start our recursive function okay so def dfs and we need to pass our index the index of encoded string which we are currently decoding because how we are going to decode we are going to decode character by character firstly we will decode the first character then second character then third character okay so that's why we are going to decode character by character so we will start reading with the index okay so i will be the parameter for our recursive function if our i happens to be equal to n that is equal to the length of a string that we have already computed the decoded message so now we need to return because there is no encoded character in our string anymore so we are going to return one because we have decoded the string otherwise we need to decode our string so our one decoded character could be of one character of encoded character or two character of encoded character so let me write one oh sorry one char of decoded decoded message will be made of one or two char of encoded message if there is one char of encoded message get converted to one char of decoded message then it's super simple we are just need to then it's a super simple we just need a for loop to traverse the string of encoded message and just convert the each character to its corresponding decoded character so no recursion nothing is required but the complexity come when two characters combinedly convert to a single decoded character that's why we need to go for recursion or memoization all those things okay so let's for j in because we need to consider one or two character we have two choices so that's why i am just writing this for loop for taking these two options you can write in either way also means without for loop also this will make the code look cleaner that's why i am using this for loop for j in range i to minimum of i plus 2 comma n okay because we want to because uh, see why we are writing this min because we need to consider also see if there is only one character left at the last end so we can take only one character there we can't take two character so that's why we are taking care of that condition using this min thing that which one is smaller either i plus 2 is smaller then it's okay we can take two characters if the length is like going to finish only one character left so we are going to take care of only one character okay firstly let's convert our current encoded character into an integer because it's a string so temp int s colon i colon j plus 1 okay if temp is equal to 0 this means that we can't convert this character to a string so we need to return from this path saying that there is no way we can decode this message okay or our temp is greater than 26 then also we need to return okay so we are going to break this loop otherwise so we need to sum up the decoded number how many uh, numbers are there we can decode using one character and using two character of the decoded message so let's here take a variable count initially it's zero now we are going to count plus is equal to dfs of j plus 1 okay and at last we are going to return this count okay yeah so this is the code and never forget to run your function so dfs 
and here we need to write the return statement return dfs 0 okay so this is it the recursive way of solving this problem is only this 10 line of codes so firstly what we are doing we are taking the length of the string and we are going to decode character by character how we do in normal life also firstly we want to decode the first character then after decoding the first character we will go for the next character the next character similar thing we are doing so if there is no character present to decode it means that we have already decoded our message so we are going to return one in this case this is our base case or otherwise if there are characters to be decoded so we can read either one character or two character because the one character of decoded message could be made of either one care of encoded message or two care of encoded message so that's why we have two choices to make either we can choose one character of encoded message or two character of encoded message so that's why we have put this for loop and then we are going to just take the integer thing put the encoded character there and now we are just going to compare that if the encoded character is zero because there is no mapping defined for zero so we are going to break this loop and going to return zero there is no possible way we can decode if we are considering this as a character of encoded message okay and if the two character thing is greater than 26 then also it's not possible because we have map and defined till 26 so we are going to return zero in this case also otherwise everything is fine if the our integer value happens to be between 1 to 26 everything is perfect there is mapping defined for the, these integers so we are going to call our dfs j plus 1 from the next index and just keep the summation of the encoding message how how many encoded message we are getting and at at last we are going to return the count of this so yeah that's it so this is recursive way so obviously if you submit this this is going to give us tle error but let's run for the test cases so it's working fine now let's put our memoization thing here so firstly we need a dictionary to store our intermediate results now we are going to check here if i n d we are going to return we are not going to compute once again otherwise here if it's not there i'm going to store the result in our dictionary after the computation so di is equal to count okay yeah that's our memoization thing we created a dictionary firstly we are checking if this sub problem is already solved it's inside our dictionary if this is the condition then we are going to return the value there if this sub problem is not in our dictionary i'm going to store this sub problem and its result in our dictionary yeah so let's run our code so it's working fine let's run for example test cases yeah so it's working fine let's submit our code yeah so it's got submitted and it's efficient and this space complexity is not good why because we are using o n space here this recursion tree and this memoization also is taking o n space we can reduce this space to constant thing by using bottom up dp because bottom up dp tells us which thing we need to store or which thing we don't need to store if we see this recursive relation this is here this one and this for loop we just need the last two values to compute the next two values just like Fibonacci thing we need the entire calculation of our sub problems we just need the last two values so if we can store the last two thing our sub problem could be solved our problem could be solved in constant time so we can improve on that by using bottom up dp so bottom up dp is same thing just using this recursive relation we are going to just write the thing so if you want me to solve bottom up dp because it's quite similar so we can arrive at that thing using this same recurrence relation so 
but still if you want me to write that code and explain so please let me know so now let's see the time and space complexity so the time complexity is o n because this for loop if you say this for loop is just taking two you know constant one and two so it's we can ignore this for loop or we can to a statement we can write to a statement instead of this for loop okay so the time complexity is o n because we are going to solve or convert each decoded character into the encoded character or sometimes we are going to combine so there will be n different sub problems so the time complexity will be o n and the space complexity will be also be o n i hope you found this video useful please like and subscribe this channel needs your support a lot thank you for listening